Well, welcome back to another Story Tim, where I tell my favorite stories from my 50 years here on planet Earth. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, one of the experiences that I had when I was shooting news back in Savannah, Georgia with WTOC, the CBS affiliate down there. You know, a lot of what we covered when we were doing news was called spot news. And that's where we would listen to the scanner and something would come on, the, uh, uh, like a uh, a signal 23, which was the Savannah Police Department code for a shooting. Whenever we heard something like that, well, we immediately scrambled out either a live truck or, or one of the uh, photographers or reporters that would go over there and cover all this stuff. So I remember I was out there uh, in near the Hitch Village area of uh, East Savannah, and we got a call that there was a, there had been a shooting. So I jumped in my truck to go and cover this stuff because, of course, I always liked the, the shooting and the cops and the running after guys and stuff like that. It was just part of my nature. I just enjoyed it. So I, I came cruising up on the scene and uh, there's this guy laying down on the ground. You can get a feel for how fast you need to react to the situation by the, uh, by the way the paramedics are, are running around. If the guys are kind of do, 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 well, you know, yeah, well, then you know, well, it's nothing really too serious. But if they got that intense look on their face and they're, and they're really getting after what they're doing, you need, man, you need to break out the camera and, the, and the, uh, the gear right quick because something big is going down. Well, I rolled up into this scene and about this time, uh, I mentioned on a couple of the other story, Tim's about uh, the uh, Jivens gang who was, uh, you know, they had as part of their, their initiation were shooting people. Well, this was related to, to that crime spree that was going on in Savannah at the time. This particular one, uh, what they were doing is if they were selling drugs, which at the time the, the drug of choice was crack, if they were selling crack on the wrong corner, then the other guys, the other gang would come over there and their weapon of choice was a 22. And they wouldn't really try to kill the guy, but what they would do is they would drive by and shoot him in the butt. So, you know, we had heard the shooting and I had kind of expected that maybe it was something like that. So I came on this guy, this guy was laying down. When you look down there, of course, like I mentioned before, you look to see what the paramedics are like. If they're looking very intense, you know, then, uh, uh, then you can know something bad is going on. The other thing you look at is how much blood is there on the ground. If there's no blood really per se, then you're, maybe the guy got knocked out or something like that, but it's hardly ever a fatal thing, you know. So anyway, but the paramedics were running around like something was really serious going on. So of course I jumped out, grabbed my camera and, and ran over to the deal. So I come over there and the guy's laying, the black guy is laying on the ground there and the paramedic is leaning over him going, keep breathing, man, keep breathing. Don't give up. Keep breathing, man. Keep breathing. And the cop is going, hey, hey, don't, who did this to you, man? Who did this to you? You know, and the, and the, the black guy is completely black, you know, and if a black guy can turn pale, which they actually can look pale, you know, he was looking pale and I'm like, well, what's going on here? He says, well, the guy's been shot. Paramedics, the guy's been shot. And it's it's gone in through his back, so you know they they aimed a little bit high. And I said, well, I don't see much blood. And he says, well, what happened is the uh, the bullet has gone into his rib cage and it's gone aside there and just ricocheted around and inside the inside his rib cage and inside his uh, internal organs. So it would acted kind of like this bullet. It had kind of like a blender going around, just just kitting all the stuff. So as the cops again were like, come on, man, tell me who did this, man. Come on there. And the paramedics are, keep breathing, man. Keep breathing, man. And I'm, I'm getting all this stuff just up close and personal with all this, this video like that. And I actually watched the guy expire right there before me. Just, just died. Stop breathing. Guy's doing CPR and nothing left. Nothing left to them. Well, you know, you, you see that sort of stuff. I got back. I got back into the, uh, you know, ran back to the station to, to run this, you know, this video of what had just happened and, you know, homicide, another homicide and the, and the deal. Uh, a lot of the kids that I worked with at the time, as I was doing ministry in Savannah, too, I wasn't just doing news, you know, were uh, all teenage guys. And in fact, some of them, one of them I can remember, his name was Kalen. Uh, Kalen had actually uh, uh, been participating with some of the, the gangs. He was only like 14, something like this. Pretty big, tough kid, though. You know, and they were hiding all of his weapons around this stuff. And so I can remember I was over there with them on a Sunday morning and, and I said, listen, I want to take you all to see something. So I walked them over to this place where there was blood on the ground. And I said, see this right here, kids, this is what happens if you keep dealing drugs, you're hanging out the wrong guys. You may think it's going to make a lot of money or you, you may get some kind of fame or glory or something like that because, uh, you know, you're part of a gang like this. But this is what it turns out to be. This is what your life will end up right here on the ground, right there, dead. 
So, you know, the good news was that some of those kids did get out of the gangs because of, you know, showing them kind of a shock treatment type of thing like that. But um, you think that uh, if there's anything that I've learned from, from shooting news all those years and covering all those hundreds of stories was that life is fragile. And you never should take anything for granted because you never can tell when something that would be like a seemingly random thing can end up putting your life out in jeopardy. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a big deal about carpe diem, man. Seize the day because you never know what's going to happen next. And that was another story tale.